And uh, hey, uh, I just want before we get started, I want to uh, share a little bit about next week, and that next week um, is pretty much man, it's one of our biggest Sundays, and it's our Vision Weekend, and we always um, at the end of October always kind of give you an idea of what really is the next year going to look like, and and I think it's so important as a church that you know it, and and um, and we're going to lay out some goals that we have, and then, as you know, in, in January, uh, I always do what they call the state of the church, and, and I let you know all the goals we accomplished, and I think it's important um, for you to know that, um, because I believe that it, it, it attaches to what you are, are going to do, and, and God's doing in your own life, and sometimes what we forget is, you know, um, that there are two other locations right now having services. And so we're one church in three locations. And, and sometimes you just, you kind of forget that. You're like, oh, well, I, 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 oh, yeah, that's right. And, and, um, and you know, what, what you have done to make that happen, um, you get to get that report. And it's going to be great. And you're going to see all that God's doing. It's going to be exciting. I, I really, really can't wait till next week. It's going to be good. But we're going to get ready for today. Today's been awesome. And it's going to be even better today. All right, you ready to get in the Word today? Can you stand and give our online audience a big, big, big round of applause right now? God bless you. We love you. We've been in, we've been in this series um, called The Art of Being Unordinary. And it came from a, a book that I had, ri- uh, had read. And you know that I love leadership. And, and I really believe that God has really called us to live an extraordinary life. Um, but one of the challenges is that we don't know how to get to extraordinary because we don't know how to first be unordinary. And, and, and really what it is is that in order to become extraordinary, you gotta, you gotta stop being common. And, and so, so we've been talking about it and today we're taking it a little step further on what it is to live the extraordinary step and, and really what God has for us today is it's Baptism Sunday. But this has been our theme verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, it says, We are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within. Listen, and this is why. So that the extraordinary overflow of God's power will be seen as God's and not ours. At the end of the day, listen, what is going to make you extraordinary is that God put in his extra on your ordinary. And only he could get the credit for that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation and give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray that you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say amen. amen. You may be seated. If you have a message outline, our ushers will be more than happy to get you one so you can follow along with us. One of the things that I really believe is that the enemy really, in some sense, works very hard to make sure that you really never understand your purpose. One of the things that I often hear when I'm sitting down having coffee with people, and matter of fact, it was just a few weeks ago that I was having coffee with a, a guy that, that was telling me, you know, how his year has been going and it's been successful and his, his business has been successful, and this year he's not just going to make six figures, he's going to make seven figures. And I'm thinking like, bro, you're going to treat me for lunch, right? And, um, but he was just sharing all these things and that, you know, they're, they're going to move into their dream house. And, and I've been in these conversations before, and I was kind of waiting towards the end because it never really ends like the way it starts. And one of the last things he told me before... We kind of kicked into another part of the conversation. He looked at me. He says, but pastor, I got to tell you something. I said, what is it? He says, I'm empty. He goes, I, 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 I watch what you do. And you're always happy. I go, well, you, you always see a smile on my face. He goes, but, but you were talking about fulfillment. And I've. I feel like in my career, I'm at the top. I feel like what I can give to my family has always been my dream. But I'm empty. And at the end of the day, I think every one of us is looking for this extraordinary life. And we got this image of this idea of what it could look like. 
But the truth is, is that, that fulfillment only comes by you living out the purpose that God has for you. Billy Graham said this. He says, the greatest tragedy in life is dying without ever knowing why you were born. Think, think about that for a moment. Think about that like, like, man, God, what is it that you have for my life? Why did you choose me? And we see this in, in the life of Jesus. And, and, and when it was his time to get baptized, because there was something significant about Jesus' baptism that is going to be significant to you and I. And yet I believe that most of us, like myself, that were raised in church, maybe only come, have, have heard one side of baptism, that that, man, when, when you get baptized, your sins are forgiven. But what, what's really the other side? And what, what, where does it really start and what really matters? And David had an understanding in Psalms chapter 16. He says, for, for you bring me a continual revelation, not, not, not just a, an Easter revelation or, or you know, a, a, a once a year revelation. He says, no, you bring me this continual revelation of what? Of the resurrection life. That the path to the bliss that brings me face to face with you. And in other words, what, what David was saying was that, that, that every day he wanted to live or he wanted to understand, man, if, what is resurrection? Meaning past tense. Well, what is it going to look like? Well, what's going to happen in my life? And if I could live like that. And, and most Christians today kind of would sit there and they'll always say, well, you know, I'm thankful that God sent his son Jesus to die for my sin. And we kind of stop there. And, and, and when we even celebrate Easter, it's like we all come to church on Easter and, and, and we're celebrating that my sins are forgiven. But the truth is, is that Jesus did do that. When he was on the cross, one of the last words he says was, is, it is finished. And, and, and he died. And, and the Bible says the veil tore in half. And, and now you and I have access to God. And, and the Bible talks about how Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus and then laid it inside the tomb. And, and all Jesus could have done is just chill there the rest of his life. But there was a reason why he resurrected. It was more than just something that you and I have this comprehension of. And, and, and that is that Jesus resurrected so that you can fulfill the purpose and the plan that he has for your life. See, the resurrection of Jesus gives you power to close the gap between the life you're living and the life you could live. And, you know, even John, I think John paints this perfect picture of the church. That, you know, John is, is out there and he's preparing the way of the Lord and he's baptizing people. And, and John is, is getting the water and, and, he, and he's throwing it on the people and, and, and he would say, repent for the kingdom of God. Is at hand. And, and the people would repent. And, and just like, you know, you saw when you walked in, the, the people kind of lined up to get into the pool. I, I believe in those days they were kind of lined up. And, and, and John was just baptizing them one at a time. And repent for the kingdom of God. Repent with your heart. Turn from your wicked ways. And, 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 and he would do that. And, and you could imagine kind of the line kind of shortening and, and John kind of looking up and getting the water and, and throwing it on the people. And then repent for the kingdom of God. And, you know, another one, repent for the kingdom of God. And then all of a sudden John looks up and he's like, whoa, this isn't, a, this isn't an ordinary person. And standing right there is Jesus. And John's like, um, you don't need to get baptized. Matter of fact, look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 3. It says, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But, but look what John said. You could see the tension. John says, but John tried to talk him out of it. He says, I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. And Jesus said, but Jesus said, it, is, it should be done. And why should it be done? So we must carry out all that God requires. And so the reason why John struggled with this was because the whole time he's baptizing, he's going, repent for the kingdom of God. Repent for the kingdom of God. And then Jesus is there, and, and he looks at Jesus, and he goes, 
wait a minute, you're, you're the Messiah. You're sinless. So the question is, is why are you here? Why do you need to get baptized? And most people think that baptism is just about the forgiveness of sin. But baptism is, is more than that. Because if that's the case, then Jesus would not have had to be baptized. Because Jesus was sinless. And so there are two dimensions to baptism. There is the time when you go down. And that is when literally you're dunked underwater. And depending on how much you've sinned, we'll keep you. No, I'm joking. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but you're, you're underwater. You stay down there. You've been a sinner all this time. And the grandma's like, keep them down. No, I'm joking, you know what I mean? But, 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 but when you come up, it is the resurrection. It's the new life. Matter of fact, look, look what happens. And it says, but Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry it all God. So John agreed to baptize him. And after his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water. Now, I want you to notice something. Because all the writers that write about Jesus' baptism, and they are literally writing about that moment, they all say the same thing. And they say this, and they all say, when Jesus came up from the water. I looked at it in the other gospel. I looked at it in the original. And when Jesus came up from the water, you want to know what none of them said? None of them said, and when Jesus went down into the water. Because guess what? Jesus didn't have to go down. Because he was sinless. But he had to come up. Because as soon as Jesus came up, just, just think about this for a moment. Jesus, as soon as Jesus came up, look what happened. As Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And it settled on him. Now, the question you got to, this is why I love the Bible. It's why it's living. You got to ask, where did the dove come from? If you remember 6,000 years before that, there was a dove that left the ark. And the last time it's identified is that it has an olive branch. Because it's, 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 it's letting everybody know that didn't know at that time, the next time I land on something, it's going to be the olive branch. And his name is going to be Jesus. And the Bible says that, listen, the Holy Spirit, as a form of a dove, didn't land on the head of Jesus. Come on, right? Didn't land on the arm of Jesus. Come on, if you were a parrot, you know, remember, yeah, they, they would, the, 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 you know, every time you see a parrot or an eagle, they land on the arm. No, no, it landed on his shoulders. You, you want to know why it landed on his shoulders? Because it's the closest area to the ear. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's a still, small voice. He's not loud. Ah, no, no, no. He's that little voice inside of you that says, don't do that. Don't go that direction. For I know the plans he has for you. Listen, that's called conviction. Not conviction. <laughs> conviction. And here's what I've learned. If you pay attention to this conviction, you'll never end up in this conviction. And the whole time he's telling you this. See, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit, hold that for me, brother. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in you. When, when you said, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus came into your heart, but so did the Holy Spirit. Why did the Holy Spirit come into your heart? He's your guide. He's your teacher. See, all, all this time you've been falling for lies, you know, and, and that's what got you into sin because the devil is the father of lies and in him there's no truth. So you've been falling for these lies. So you need to know what truth is because you don't know it. So this is why the Holy Spirit comes in you. So I like to say it like this, very simple to explain. The Holy Spirit comes in you to guide you, but he comes on you to use you. I'm going to say that one more time. It's called a rewind, okay? The Holy Spirit comes in you to guide you, but he comes on you to use you. And the Bible says this, and the Holy Spirit, watch this, the Holy Spirit came on 
Jesus landed on his shoulders, and, and, and his father said these words, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. In Acts chapter 2, look what it says. It says, and those who accepted his message were, were baptized. You have to hear the message, and then you follow through with an action, and about 3,000 were added that day, that, to that number that day. Why, why did they want to get baptized? Not just for the forgiveness of sin. But they understood that I'm going to live for a purpose of why I was born in the first place. In other words, Jesus died. Listen, Jesus died for your sins, but he rose for your purpose. And, and, and this, is, this is what you and I are looking for. We're looking to live this extraordinary life, this significant life that, that we know is promised to us. And we got to ask ourselves, man, when does it all begin? It begins at baptism. It begins when you begin to live your resurrection life. So what can we learn about this, this whole resurrection life? And that is the first thing we got to understand, listen, to learn it is to follow the example set by Christ. Like we need to follow. That's how easy is that? We just got to follow it. The Bible says this in Matthew 3. I'm going to read it again, but I want, I'm going to show something different. It says, as, as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment... Not, 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 it's not, not, not tomorrow. It says at that, come on, let's say it, moment. Say it again, at that. So, so in one moment, God can change your life forever. Just think about that. So, so Jesus shows up. And for 30 years, he's a carpenter. You know, he played camel football. You know, he did all the things kids did, you know. And, and, and so you, you, you hear of him in the Bible as a baby. And then he's 12 years old in the synagogue that's, and then, then around that is the marketplace. And so you knew that he was partly there for, for, for the synagogue, but he was also there because his dad was a tradesman. His dad was a, was a carpenter. So they, this is the places they would go to sell their goods or pick up materials. And so it was a very common place for Jesus to go. And we know the story Jesus quotes, and, uh, quotes the, the Torah, quotes the Torah, quotes the, quotes, quotes the book of Isaiah. And, and all of a sudden, man, you know, he, he gets lost and, and all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and then the next time you hear of Jesus after that, he's, He's about to get baptized. He's 30 years old. So, so Jesus shows up, and people identify Jesus as the son of Joseph. Oh, that's the carpenter's son right there. That, that's who that is. But John notices him as the Messiah. Behold the Lamb of God who come and take away the sins of the world. And the Bible says, watch this. Could you imagine if you're there? I mean, look at the grand entrance dun, da, 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 Jesus makes, right? And, and, and the Bible says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son. Could you imagine going? And then looking at Joseph, then looking up, and they're just doing this. This is my son. Watch this. In whom I love. And with him, and I'm well pleased. Let me ask you a question I ask the rest of the services, and that is, imagine you weren't able to talk to your child for 30 years. You had no communication with them. And you knew that day was coming. Finally, you, your boy gets to hear your voice. What would you tell them? I would probably sit there and say, Judah, man, your daddy loves you. I would have probably said that. But God didn't say that. What he said was, this is my boy. Hey, everybody, that's my boy right here. In whom I am well pleased with. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. He had not yet turned water into wine. He had not yet raised Lazarus from the dead. He had not yet took two fish and five loaves and fed the multitude. He had not walked on water. Not had, he hadn't done nothing yet. The first thing his father gives him, which is the first thing you get at baptism, is what you have needed your whole life is affirmation. 
Hear me today. Listen, if you don't hear anything, listen to what I'm about to say. You want to know why Jesus was, <laughs> was able to like, the, 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 the sick would come and, and, and he'd heal them and his disciples would go, Jesus, you can't do that. It's the Sabbath. And, and Jesus, well, what are you so paranoid about? What am I supposed to tell him? Hey, come back tomorrow. You know, no, he, because Jesus was never looking for acceptance or approval. Want to know why? It's because he had affirmation. You want to know what got you and I in trouble? You want to know what caused us to cross moral boundaries? You want to know what caused us to do things that we told ourselves growing up we would never do? Is that we got caught up in a moment that at that one moment we were going to sit there and we sat there and said, I, would, I, I'm, I, I want to be accepted. Come on, I, I want this person to approve me. And the reason why you look for acceptance and approval is because you're lacking affirmation. And so God knew that in order for my son to accomplish the will of why I sent him, he has to be affirmed by me because he don't need an amen from the crowd. He doesn't need acceptance or approval. He has affirmation from me and it allows him to do anything I will tell him to do. Some of the things that, you, that you've been fighting against has nothing to do with your enemy. It has everything to do with your feelings. Man, if I do this, man, are people going to accept me? Are people going to approve me? Man, if I really do this, man, I mean, what are people going to think about me? We think more about what people think about us. Come on, I, I, I know. I'm going to get in your Kool-Aid, figure out the flavor today, okay? <laughs> Listen to me. There's not a day that I don't wake up in the morning, and when I wake up in the morning, I put my worship music on, and, and I'm in my, my office, and I'm praying. I lift my hands, and I say, Father, thank you today that I'm the apple of your eyes. Thank you that you affirm me today. Because at the end of the day, listen, one of the greatest advices a pastor ever gave me, he said, oh, Ben, make sure you get on the platform with an amen already in your spirit. Because if you're going to preach for an applause, you're going to compromise what needs to be preached. Hear me what I'm saying today. At the end of the day, you should wake up every morning and say, I'm the apple of God's eye. God is for me and not against me, man. The favor of God is on my life. Listen, I'm a child of the most high God. And when you have this affirmation, I promise you, you will not live for people's acceptance, people's approval. And you watch where God's going to take you because he's, you're going to be a display of his splendor, of his goodness on your life. It's where he wants to take you. It's what he wants to do in your life. And Jesus was able to go against the culture. Because at the end of the day, he already had an amen in his spirit. And can I tell you something? When you get baptized, affirmation comes upon you. You're affirmed by God. It is God reminding you that your sins didn't disqualify you. Because I came and requalified you. At the end of the day, he's like, look it, you've messed up and I know you have. But my plan is still in place. This is why Paul writes in Ephesians. He says, so be careful how you act. These are difficult days. He says, don't be fools. Be wise. Listen, I love this. Look what he says. Make the most of every opportunity you have for doing good. Like, like, like in other words, listen, don't live by the minute but live by the moment. This, this, this is a moment in your life that literally at one moment God can change everything for your life. The very thing you've been looking for, the very thing you've been searching for, at one moment today God can change it. The second thing we can learn about this resurrected life is number two, it demonstrates my changed life. That, that's what it does. Peter writes and he says this. He says, it's in baptism. Watch this. We show that we have been saved from death and doom by the resurrection of Christ. So it's in baptism that, that, that I'm showing people that my life is not bound in my past no more. That, that God literally has forgot about it and so should I. And he says this, not because our bodies are washed clean by water, but because in being baptized, listen, we are turning to God and asking him to cleanse our hearts from sin. That, that, that God, listen, you're going to, I'm going down, but I'm also coming up. And today I, 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 will, I will never be the same after this. Because baptism is about your sins being forgiven, but your purpose being discovered. And I cannot emphasize it more 
on how so many Christians today are saved by grace, but they are lost by purpose. And at the end of the day, they're still trying to figure it out, like, God, why did you choose me? Like, like why do I even come to church? Like, like what, what, what do I, like, like, I, like, there has to be more, and there is. Is when you, when you begin to attach your life to something greater than yourself. Jesus said it. As I close, he said, he, he said I, I didn't come to be served. No, I came to serve. The last demonstration he gives to his disciples right before he goes to the cross. He gets on his knees and begins to wash their feet. And Peter pulls his feet back like, you know, don't touch my toes. Don't look at them. Haven't got a pedicure yet. No, I'm joking. But he almost like, don't touch them. And he's like, no, no, no. If I don't wash them, you have no part with me. It was this whole thing of just giving them the final picture. Before you see me on that cross, the last act you'll see me doing is leading from beneath. See, leaders that lead from the top push down. Leadership from the bottom pushes up. Jesus says, greater works will you do than I. Don't ever follow a leader that leads from the top down. They'll suffocate and put a lid over your life. You want to be around a leader. Leaders, company owners, listen, business people, listen, learn to lead the way Jesus did from the bottom up. Push people up. Take them where their life can't go themselves. And lastly is declare my commitment publicly. Because that's what baptism is. It's like, Jesus, you died for me exposed so that I could live covered. Because the first thing that happened when Adam sinned was he got exposed. Him and Eve look at each other. They grab fig leaves as quick as they can to cover themselves up. Because if you're not baptized, it's just people identify you for what they see. Because your life's exposed. It comes, he comes to cover your life. You get to recover everything. The enemy has stolen from you. I remember when I went to camp. And you know my story and was hooked on drugs and alcohol and was raised in a great Christian faith home. I had no excuse for the life I was living except really I just... I'm just looking for people to mentor me. And, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. And it's the truth that gangs know how to disciple sometimes better than the church. Nobody wakes up and says, hey, one day I'm going <laughs> to, hey, my destiny is to spend time in prison. Well, you, don't, you don't get up and do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the biggest mistakes in my life. That's what I'm going to do. No, no, you didn't decide that. No, no, you got discipled into doing that. Because you were looking for something everybody else is looking for. Will someone just lead my life? Will someone just affirm me? And if you can't affirm me, then approve me. So why do you think you, you, got, you get jumped into a neighborhood and then you got to go prove yourself? You get involved in a fraternity and a sorority, and, and guess what? You, you got to get initiated because you got to prove yourself. It's all works. And so that's what happened to me. 
And I go to this camp and I hear this preacher. I'm 16 years old and he's talking about baptism. And I, I promise you I could quote everything he's talking about because I was raised in church. Come on, Sunday school. Wooden pews. Come on, felt Moses. Remember they would put them on a felt board, right? It was felt. We didn't have chalkboards back in those days. We had felt. I remember my teacher teaching us Sunday school about Moses and, and the felt. And she stuck them on the felt board and then Moses fell. And then she was like, well, even Moses fell. <laughs> Incorporated in her message. Come on, Father Abraham had many sons. Yeah, so you guys are singing it, right? I was, I was raised in church. But my whole life, I, I could tell you, Jesus died for my sins. But nobody could answer, why should I be a Christian? What I was looking for was never talked about. What is your purpose in life? So what happened, I, I found it in different places, and my youth pastor was up there, and, 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 and he started preaching. He says, tomorrow I'm gonna, we're going to get baptized. And I'm like, oh. I've been baptized already. I guess that's everybody else. And he gets up the next day at camp and he says, I want to talk to you about baptism. And he said something that radically changed my life. And at that moment, I sat there. I said, that's what I've been looking for my whole life. And he said these words, Jesus died for your sins. And he could have stopped. But he rose for your purpose. Matter of fact, when he came out the grave, the first thing he said was, take me to Peter and the disciples. Who were hiding out from the purpose that he had instilled within them to do. And can I tell you? It was that moment that when I got baptized and I came up from that water, I knew it. God, you have a call on my life. I'm going to change the world. I was crazy enough to believe that. Because I discovered why was I born? Why am I living today? And most Christians don't know that. Because you're satisfied. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I got fire insurance. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm good. But you're not saved to sit. You're saved to serve. Like, like, like I, get to, I get to make a difference now. Like at my job, I get to make a difference now. Like, like, like I don't look at my job no more as my job. It's my mission field now. That, that at the end of the day, people can see my life. And I don't have to wear a, a big old Captain C for Captain Christian upon my shoulder. They'll see the fruits that are on my life. They'll see the joy that I got. They'll see the peace that I have. And they're looking at you and they're saying, boy, you're prospering. Man, look what God, hey, well, why are you always coming to work happy? Because I serve the one that has given me a purpose and a why of why I'm living today. That's why. And, 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 and. And this is why Baptism Sunday, to me, is, is one of my favorites. Is because it is, it exemplifies everything that I know you're looking for. You just can't articulate it. And you're looking for your why. Jesus was the Son of God as a baby. He was the son of God as a teenager. He was the son of God as a young adult. He was the son of God at 30. But something happened at baptism. When he came up, the Holy Spirit came on him. The heavens opened. He was affirmed. And Jesus went about doing good. In other words, there wasn't a miracle. Until he got baptized. Jesus didn't have to get baptized because he was a sinner. 
he was sinful, but he had to get baptized to activate the purpose and plan that God has for his life. And listen, if you think if Jesus had to do it, so do you. And so you're sitting there going, well, pastor, I hear you, but I didn't come prepared. And we still have time. Your football game ain't coming on until 1 o'clock. <laughs> but I didn't come prepared. See, faith says let's believe God for people to get baptized. Belief says follow through with it. So here's what we did. We've been praying for you all week because we knew you'd have excuses. Same way John tried to talk Jesus from getting baptized. It's what the devil's doing right now, trying to talk you off from getting baptized. Because in your head you're going, I need to get baptized. I should get baptized. Some of you are like, well, you know what, man, let me address the elephant in the room. Well, you know what, man, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was baptized as a Catholic. You, you ain't baptized as a Catholic. That's like saying I'm baptized as a Christian. Well, I was baptized in the Catholic church. You ain't baptized in the Catholic church. No, when the priest baptized you, he baptized you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If he did say, oh, and in the Catholic church, that's unbiblical. <laughs> because our pastors are going to baptize you out there, and they're going to say, we, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're not going to say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Destiny Church. <laughs> they ain't doing that because that's not biblical. You're not baptized into a church. You're baptized into Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's who you're baptized into. It's not like when you come to heaven and you're before Jesus and the book is open, and he's going to be like, what are you? And you're like, I'm from West Side Catholics. <laughs> he ain't going to do that. Oh, you go to that side. It's your moment. But I didn't come prepared. We did. So here's what we did. We went to all the, the thrift stores to buy shorts. Here it is. You have no excuse. Zero excuse. Okay? Then you say, well, I don't have a towel. Well, we got that too. Clean towels. You walk it out, you walked in dry, you're going to walk out blessed. Okay? But, Pastor Obed, I want a T-shirt. Because our church is so generous, we can afford it. We bought 200 extra t-shirts, right, so that you have a t-shirt to go home with, okay? You have one. Listen. And, and you're like, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I'm going somewhere after. We got hairspray. And they even some makeup, too, if you need it. We have seven teams. We have a wet team, a dry team. You have no excuse. Want to know why? Because you didn't think you were coming to get baptized. But the Holy Spirit did. And you know what he was doing this week? He was working over here to prepare over here because he knew you were coming. And, 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 and you, you want to know what you've said in your life? You said at one point in your life, no one cares about me. Can I tell you something? He cares about you enough that he planned something for you that you didn't even have in your own plan. It's how much he wants you to walk in your purpose and your plan that he has for your life. And stop falling for all these other plans. They're not going to take you nowhere. He knows every step you can make. He has a destiny for your life. You don't have to live another day trying to figure it all out. He's already figured it out for you because he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life in Jesus' name. And what he has for you today. The Holy Spirit's here. He's here. He's here. So I'm asking you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Just real simple. And, I, you know, I see it all on you. Tears are rolling down all your eyes right now. It's because the Holy Spirit, he's, he's doing this to you. Don't fight it. Pastor Obed, I'm not ready. No one's ever ready for anything until you take your first step. I wasn't ready to get married, but I still came and showed up. 
I wasn't ready to be a father. But my daughter was born. You're never ready for something big until you take that first step. And it's your moment today. Don't miss this moment. God has this moment for you. He's thought about you. He's, he, has, he talked to others about you. You were part of discussions the last few weeks that you had no idea. For this one moment. One moment and Jesus' life was changed. And if one moment can change the trajectory of his future, one moment can change yours. You're here today. Pastor Ben, I'm getting baptized today. Listen, I promise you, be the best decision you'll ever make in your life. You have no excuse. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands really quick. One, two, three. Lift them up wherever they're at. Look at all the hands that are going up. As your hands are up, I want you to stand to your feet really quick. Just stand up. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Look at all these people that are standing up right now. Come on, come on, keep on standing. Come on, keep on standing. Come on, keep on standing. Come on, there's more of you that, are, that lifted your hands. Come on, just keep on standing. That's all you got to do. I'm making this decision today. My life is never going to be the same. Doing it. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Because I, I, I know what's happening in your life. I see. Okay, gra grab all your stuff, and I just want you to come forward real quick. We don't bring people forward, but we're doing it now because we're going to have you go out. But I want, you, I want to give you a high five, okay? Because I'm not getting in that pool with you, all right? So come on. Grab all your stuff and come forward. Come on, church. Come on. This is what it's all about. Heaven's rejoicing. Come on. Heaven is rejoicing right now. That's what happens. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, look at this. Awesome. Look at that. Come on. I love this. Come on, look at this. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that. It's beautiful. Man, God is good, huh? You know, sometimes we think we fail God. At the end of the day, he loves you too much not to let you go. You know, before you were born, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, he gave you a name and gave you a purpose. And the whole time, the devil's been trying to mess that up, right? He's just giving you another chance. That's what he's doing. He's doing that for you. God's giving you another chance. You know what you're feeling is the love of God right now. That's what you're feeling. It's overwhelming, huh? Like, like God, why would you love me when I've messed up, right? Because you look at your own shame and you look at all the mistakes you've made and you're going, if nobody sees me worthy, why would he? Right? Am I right? And that's what you're feeling right now. It's the overwhelming love of God. You know what it is? It's what he's doing. He's loving you right now. It's awesome, huh? You're going to cry all day. <laughs> Let Cry all day. Because these are not tears of pain, what you're experiencing right now. These are tears of love. It's the greatest love you'll ever feel in your life right now. Right? <laughs> Greatest love you ever feel in your life. Come on, man. What's your name? Johnny. Johnny? Yeah, yeah. What's your girlfriend? Yeah, wife. A oh, wife? Come here. Look at You believe in him. Huh. There's a plan of God on his life. God gave you a gift. Somebody who believes in you. And even at times you don't believe in yourself. Hmm, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? I'm going to tell you something, Johnny. Listen, when you get baptized today, you're going to feel the love of the Father. That's what you've been looking for. Yeah. 
Thank God. And I'm going to tell you, one day you'll be a father, and you'll father your son, and you'll father your child the way you've always wanted to be father. I don't know anything about I'm not a prophet. Right. Just telling you what the Holy Spirit's telling me right now. You're a good dude. Thank you. you got pretty eyes, too. That's why you probably <laughs> married him, right? Your baby's going to have blue eyes, too. He does. He does? Yeah. Look at that. I wish my son had blue eyes. <laughs> You're making the best decision, buddy. I know. Yeah. It's hard. I know. Because you're going, how is my life going to change? What's going to have to change? My Don't worry about that. You know what? Just, just keep on coming. That's all you got to do. You know what? No one ever becomes a drunk overnight. <laughs> they just got to keep on coming. Keep on coming to alcohol. Then one day you're going to be a drunk. Okay? <laughs> So I tell people all the time, just keep on coming to church. You don't have to try to be a Christian. Just keep on coming to church. That's all you got to do. And you know what? Little by little, all these things will come off your life. And about a year from now, you're going to be like, dude, I love this thing. You know, I'm so living the best life, bro. Come on, man. Come on, let's, we're, gonna, we're all going to pray together with them, okay? Let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me today of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. You died on the cross. You rose from the grave. And you're coming back again for me. Today, I'm getting baptized. My life will never be the same. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say amen. Amen. Come on. Hey, we got an awesome team. They're over there. See them? You're going to go this way. Come on. Go this way. They're going to give you everything. You guys stay right here for a second. Come on. Let's give them a big God bless you. Amen. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. Isn't that awesome? Hey, before we go out and watch them, you can be seated. I want you to check this out, and then I'm going to be right back. We hope today's message touched your life. Here at Destiny, where church of steps. If you lifted your hands to receive Jesus Christ, or you're curious about what your next steps are, we have something just for you at our Welcome Center. We believe that God created us to be in relationships with others. We were never meant to do life alone. So we encourage you to get connected and sign up for a life group. And next week is Vision Sunday. We cannot wait for you to see what God has done, is doing, and will continue to do. You're not going to want to miss this testament. Please stand to your feet as we welcome our pastor for the benediction. Come on. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, really quick, and, and this will be the last time I'll explain it, but I saw that two weeks ago and I was at a church. And they, I was, after service, the pastor came down after I spoke and the pastor came down and, and they put something up like that. I said, I'm going to rip that off. <laughs> and no, the reason why is because, we, and we talked about it as pastor. I did a video and I was like, we talk too much afterwards. It's like, I, I want to preach like another message, you know what I mean? So instead of me talking, we'll just put a video up there. It helps you with your next steps, and you can go and do that, and it'll be great. So I don't have to preach another sermon, right? We can get you out on time. So I'm doing it for myself, because I don't want to hear me after that long too, right? So, so we're going to start doing that, and we're going to bless you. Come on, stretch your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine on you, and his blessings go before you. We bless you and your children and your children's children. We bless your home with the shalom of God. We bless this week that the rest of this week will be the best of your week. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you.